God, right now I just come to you, Lord. I don't know who's watching this, Jesus. But I do know that you are good, God, and you are on the throne, and you are looking down upon us, Jesus, and you know whatever we're going through, God. It might be the hardest heartbreak we've ever been through, Jesus, and our heart is just ripped in pieces. And you just, you remain the same, your love, your grace, your boundless forgiveness, Jesus. God, I just pray right now, God, that you would just release it upon our lives, Jesus, that you would just protect us, God from this world and the enemy that comes against us in the daily life that we live, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you are the ruler, Jesus, and that nothing, nothing can come against us when you are with us, Jesus, and you are our Father. I thank you, God, that nothing can come against our families because you are good. You are so good. <laughs> I get so angry because they try to steal your throne and say that you are not good and you are so good, God. It's so hard to have faith because of what we see in this world. But the definition of faith is to believe in something that you do not see. So we can't look to this world to have faith in a God that looks to the outer appearance that it doesn't even appear. That wouldn't be faith, but faith is understanding that even though we do not understand the things that are going on in our lives, that God is still good and he is working everything to glorify him because he is our creator. We have to quit giving up. We have to quit throwing in the towel and saying, because of this, because of that, we don't want to serve God anymore. We can't keep giving ourselves excuses because of the pain, because of the hurt, because of all the things that have happened to us over the past years. We have to release it. We have to forgive. We have to move on. And that's when his grace comes upon our lives and we're able to push forward because of his goodness, not because of anything we've done or anything we've acted like we've overcome. No, it's because of his grace and his mercy that's come upon our lives that even give us the ability to step forward and say, I have overcome this, not because my own abilities, because of what God's done for me on the cross and I was not even deserving. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus, that you just are so good and that you work everything out, God, and that we are not called to understand. We're not called to live this perfect life. We are called to deny ourselves and to follow you. That doesn't mean without flaws. That doesn't mean we are human beings. We make mistakes, and but we're supposed to live righteously. We're supposed to put on our armor of God and daily walk with him. What does that look like? What does that look like in your life? Does that mean just throwing in the towel every morning when you wake up, telling yourself you're not good enough, looking in the mirror, telling yourself you need to lose 20 pounds. You need to lose 15 pounds. If you got on this diet, you'd feel better if you did this. Do you think that's what God looks at you every morning and says? Do you think he doesn't say you are my daughter and you are my son? I mean, guys, put on your armor. You are unstoppable. You are love. You are freedom. You have the power that God has put inside of you to live your best life. That is happiness. That is what frees you from this world. 
We don't have to live enslaved to sin. We don't have to. We're free. And that's what Christianity is. It's not this dulled down, follow Jesus, but then go out on weekends and smoke and drink and get drunk and do all this stuff that doesn't bring you fulfillment in your life just because for the moment you feel happy. What is that? Oh my goodness. Oh. If you want to know God, you have to search. He's been here. He's never left. But the more you choose to just follow your own ways and your own thoughts and the things of the world that just keep coming in, pounding, and the, the things that you scroll, the things that you listen to, the things that you open your mind and your spirit to, those things have effects on your life. Those things are making a difference. And the more you choose to just to just accept them and just say, well, I'm, I'm living right because I don't do this, or I'm living right because I don't do that. Don't listen to that. Listen to the Holy Spirit, the one that you accepted when you said, Jesus, I believe that you died on that cross for me, that you took my sins, that you were the son of God. That is, that is what we believe. When he did that, he took our sins away. So we don't have to live to our sinful nature. We're free. And that's so, that's, that's what gives us the peace and the understanding that to know that even when things look like you could be out in the rockiest, most toughest situations that you could ever think you could possibly get over, you know what? In a couple of years, you'll be over that valley. You'll be through that mountain you're going to be on the other side of it. And you know why? Because God's good. He didn't say your story is ended because of that heartache. He didn't say that. He said, I am a redeemer. Come to me. Renew your mind, your soul. Refresh. I am the living water. And when we drink of him, we're not thirsty. You guys... I am dying to just love on anyone who is just hearing this because God is so good. And if you need somebody to pray for you, reach out to me because I need it. I need it in my life. I need it in my family. I need it. I need God to just come in and wreck my world, but just in a good way, God. Oh, man. Anyways, I love you guys. <sighs>